Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to look at verses 12 through 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 22. The title of the message is, If Christ is not reason. If Christ is not reason. First Corinthians 15, verse 12. The Bible says, Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Brother Mark, can you please pray for the message? Dear God, thank you for letting us all be here today to hear the word. Please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit so that yes. he could preach a convicting message onto us and to help it help his message change our lives for the better and to apply it to our lives every day. And um, please just help us to listen and pay attention and not to get distracted with all the worldly things going on. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 If Christ is not risen, there's no reason for you and I to be here. That's number one. Thing that differentiates what we believe compared to any other religion is that Christ is risen. We believe in a risen Savior. Resurrection of Jesus Christ is the sole difference between us and many people where you could say, you know, after I die, I'm going to be risen again. That's right. Because Christ is risen. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, as many people try to believe falsely, I compare that to atheists who believe that there is no God. Being an atheist requires great faith. Because you and I are born with a conscience. And that conscience wants to believe and worship and praise a higher being. How do I know? Not just that I have it, but look at all the folks around the world. If you were to go to any jungle, you'll see people worshiping something. I mean, albeit a lot of times they believe in the wrong things or worship the wrong things. Whether it's animals, spirits just the nature. But who's the creator of the universe? That's Jesus Christ. Essentially, you know, they're worshiping the greatest being ever, who is God, who came as a human being, and who rose from the dead. That's Jesus Christ. Then, if you were to deny resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's just like denying God exists. Because Throughout the history, many, many millions of people tried to reject the res- resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because if you're an atheist, if you're a hater of Christianity, if you don't like the Word of God, if you don't like King James Bible, you just have to do one thing. Find the remains of Jesus Christ. Then faith of billions goes up in the smoke. Yeah. However, no one has ever been able to find the remains of Jesus Christ. 
They could find remains of dinosaurs. They could find remains yeah. of, of a Homo sapiens or Homo lugus or all those homos out there. Yeah. But they cannot find the remains of Jesus Christ. With all the technology advancement, with all of this out of the world things that they talk about, why can't they find any remnant of Jesus Christ? Then, if you say that, okay, I don't believe in the resurrection, that's your faith. That's not a fact. You have a great faith in that you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But to me, there's so many evidence out there that it is a fact. It's true. If you are not going to show me the remnant of Jesus Christ, I will never believe you and trust you. But you could have your own opinion of faith. There's a remains of Muhammad, Buddha, you know, Confucius, any leaders out there, spiritual leaders, so-called. Yes. However, you still can't find Jesus Christ's remain. Oh, yeah. Then, just by the fact of that, don't you think someone that I serve is greater than someone that you serve? Amen. I mean, I'm not here to put you down, but however, my God and Savior, Jesus Christ, is greater than anybody ever existed. Why? Because he's resurrected. Only God himself can resurrect, and that's Jesus Christ. You and I could argue back and forth, back and forth. However, you cannot deny that Jesus Christ resurrected. In the court of the law, if you have few witnesses, yeah. you know, that's, that's, you know that, that means that it happened. Yes. That's why they have witnesses. That's why they have witness protection because yeah. people want to kill those witnesses because yeah. they don't want their crimes to be revealed. Yeah. In the Word of God. And we believe in the Word of God. Amen. Yes. There's evidence of resurrection. Over 500 people saw him at once. 500 people. Yes. I don't know about you. If 500 people saw me, you know, picking booger, and then I <laughs> raise my hand and I'm like in, the, in front of judge, hey, I never pick my booger, you know? Then those 500 people will be like, you did, you did, you did. Yes. There's yes. no way I could deny it in the court of the law. 500 people at once saw Jesus Christ after he resurrected. How can you deny those 500 witnesses? And sometimes, you know, being logical is not the way people want to be. Logic seems to tell me that if 500 people saw a man who was dead, was crucified on the cross, and then rose up, that means that that's true. However, besides from Bible believers, many people deny this resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. And just a person you know, trying to think in terms of you know, logic and analytical sense, it makes no sense. And if you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you're just denying the truth. It's like, you're a man. But you say, I'm a woman. No, you're a man. You're a woman. You're like, no, I'm a man. You're not. Jesus Christ resurrected. No, he didn't. He did. It's a fundamental truth that people want to deny. Again, going back to what I was saying, Atheists don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All the people who do not believe in the word of God deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even the so-called people who go to church deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because what does resurrection of Jesus Christ ultimately mean? It means that he is God. They want to deny the deity of Jesus Christ. 
it's funny how they will say, you know, Jesus Christ existed in the history. Uh, he was a historical figure. And I always ask those folks, then he's the biggest liar the world has ever known, or he is who he claimed himself to be. I mean, he could forgive sins. Uh, he received worship, and he raised himself from the dead. Okay, so to me, he's saying that he's God, and he did not deny it. If he is not God, as Apostle Paul said, everything that we believe in is for naught. It's in vain. Then you and I must recognize that, number one, there's evidence of resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as a Bible-believing Christian and non-Bible-believing you know, Christian, you need to know that there are evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First, there's empty tomb. You know, there's empty tomb. You know, Matthew 28, 6 said, He's not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Luke 24, 3 says, And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. There's empty tomb. If we were to dig grounds of people who were buried, as long as it wasn't compromised, their remains will be there. From Pharaoh to all the presidents who passed away to anybody, they're there. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, there's an empty tomb. It's not there. And Bible clearly has the answer because he's risen. You know, there's empty tomb. And, of course, talked about testimony of many witnesses. You know, 500 saw him at once. 1 Corinthians 15, 6 says, After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. How are you going to deny it? You're going to say, oh, you know, that's just the word then everything that comes out of your mouth is just a word. No one should ever trust whatever you say. That's right. But we have a final authority, which is the word of God. Amen. And Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, and 500 saw him at once. And there's many written records. Disciples saw him as well. You know, John 20, 19 says... Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So we have all these eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ being resurrected. And here are the evidences. How are you going to refute it? I'm pretty sure there are a lot of atheists out there, you know, Bible rejecting crowd there. Oh no, they're gonna come up with their own, you know, best evidence possible. But I'll ask, you know, prosecutor over there, all right, if there's a clear visual written record, I mean, how are you gonna deny it? Again, what they saw was recorded. If you don't wanna believe it, whoever you are, don't say, because it's not a fact, I don't believe it. You don't believe it because you don't want to. Right. Simple as that. Yes. <laughs> it's like this, you know. Biden is the president of the United States. A lot of people don't believe it, right? Yeah. But he's the president of the United States. I, mean, I see his face. You know, I saw him get inaugurated. He is. I mean, someone else could be, you know, controlling him or whatnot. But he's the face of the United States. He's yes. the president of the United States. I can't deny it. I mean, if there are all these conspiracy theories out there, you say he's not, <laughs> then you're really way out there. Right. Yes. I mean, you have great faith in something else. Amen. That's why when it comes to resurrection of Jesus Christ, there are evidence there. There's evidence that Christ has risen. Because if Christ is not risen, you and I, point number two, we can't have that blessed hope. Can you imagine if we don't have that blessed hope? We don't have that 
hope of rapture. We don't have hope of Lord coming back. Titus 2.13 says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The reason, as a Christian, you and I can go on and live on, and through all these turmoils and difficult times, even though the world and everything, morale, you know, everything's going down the drain, we can move on. Why? Because of that blessed hope. Amen. You and I know that one day, Lord is coming back. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, I mean, hopefully while we're here on earth, right? Yes. You know, if, hopefully the Lord doesn't tarry too long. Then he's coming back. How can he come back? Because he's resurrected. Amen. Yes. And dead in Christ shall rise yes. up again. Why? Because Christ resurrected. Amen. You and I can have that peace if you don't believe in resurrection of Jesus Christ, how can you have a peace? Right? You could have peace. You and I could have because Lord himself resurrected so that one day we'll be resurrected. Yes. And that's a promise. With this blessed hope, disciples were able to become a totally different beings after they saw Christ resurrected. They faced the world who was against the gospel of Jesus Christ. They faced ridicule. They faced oppression. And ultimately, they faced death. If they did not see the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they weren't going to do it. They couldn't go on. But they saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those disciples actually saw Christ resurrected. And they completely changed. And then they started serving him because he's a risen savior. When it comes to your life, as a Christian, you believe in a risen savior. You know, we have hymns. You know, I serve a risen savior. We don't say it for not or vain, just to say it. Because we believe in risen savior. When you believe in the risen savior, you believe in Almighty God, who can do the impossible and who can do whatever he wants, literally. And you actually have him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Yes. Then why don't you go out there and do something for him? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you and I can go out there and preach the gospel. Yes. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can give out a track. It's not a powerful thing if I'm giving a track of, you know, Confucius, somebody right. who's dead. Like, hey, hey, read this. You know, you trust him and, you know, he'll save you from hell, you know, or take you to, to paradise. Yeah. Like, you know what? He's just same as me. Same human being. You know what? I think I'm smarter than that guy. You know, Confucius has some good stuff. Buddha has some good stuff, right? But, man, my ideas are better. You know, I don't have to die like a bum, you know. At least my stomach is a little full today. You know, that's not my idea of, you know, paradise, nirvana, suffering and suffering and suffering for your own, you know, how should I say, pride and yeah. stubbornness. Yeah. But when I give you Jesus Christ, there's power. Amen. Because he can save you from eternal that's lake right. of fire. I don't care what you say. He could save you, but if you reject him, you got burning in hell. That's right. yeah. They might say, why, why, why? You know, of course, we have a common answer because the Bible says so. Amen. You know, because he saved me from hell. But one thing, because he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. Can you tell me anybody who rose from the dead? No. Uh, tell me anybody. No who, who rose from the dead in the history of mankind? Right. Tell me. I mean, they might say, I rose from the dead. You know, you're, you're a buffoon, you know. Yeah. I mean, you're probably high of something. That's right. But Christ actually died. People saw him die. Yes. Yes. And he rose from the dead. Yes. Praise the Lord. Without human blood. 
And he shed all of his blood for our sins, and he rose again from the dead. If you know that, and as a Bible-believing Christians, wouldn't you want to go out there and tell somebody? Yeah. Don't you think you have that, you know, if factor now? Man, I serve a risen Savior. I don't care what you tell me. He's risen, and you can't deny it. Yeah. Why don't you trust him as your Lord and Savior? Wouldn't you rather trust someone who can raise himself from the dead than someone who's dead and who can raise himself from the dead? I mean, they've been on the ground for thousands of years, right? Hundreds yeah. of years. Then when we say that my God is greater than your God, it's true. Amen. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is much, much, much greater than you. Yes. He is God of your God. Amen. Simple as that. Then I could tell you, whether you are talking to any other religion, you could say confidently, the person that you believe in is not a God. The person that I believe in is a God. Almighty God, ruler of universe, creator of universe. And you have the desire to serve and praise and worship higher being, Amen. wouldn't you want to do it to the right person yes. instead of the wrong person? Yes. Because so many people are believing sincerely in the wrong things. You and I are put here on earth to serve the Lord and serve others and be a minister to others. Amen. And when we say we're ministering to others, we are providing needs of others. Yes. What is their need? They need the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Simple as that. So when you think about resurrection of Jesus Christ, since I have that blessed hope, I need to tell others about the blessed hope. Amen. When people are in a hospital bed and about to die, what do you think they want to hear? And what do you think is most beneficial for them? Hey, you made millions in your life. You are a great person. He's going to be like, I mean, that's not going to help me right now. They say, man, you're a good-looking person in the hospital, on the hospital bed. You, know, you still got that look. You're still beautiful. You know, you're still handsome. They're like, get out of here, man. I'm about to die. Yeah. Tell me something that's beneficial to me. What would be most beneficial to them? Hey, you know what? There's... There's a Buddha out there, you know. He found his way, and he died, you know. And they say, okay, is that going to really give me peace in my mind? Because, you know what, you know, they say reincarnation and stuff, because I'm kind of, like, doubting it. Because what if there's no reincarnation? What's going to happen to me? Am I going to just disappear? No. Because they're scared. Only thing that's going to give him hope and peace is Jesus Christ. Yes. You know why? Because if you don't trust Jesus Christ, you're going to face second death in eternal lake of fire. Yes. But if you trust Jesus Christ, yeah. you're going to be alive again. Woo! You know, people yes. say, I want to live forever. I want to live forever. Some people do. What do you think all those people constantly go to hospital eat thousands of vitamins, you know. Nowadays, if you go to any, any department store, like, like supermarket, everywhere, pharmacy, they have a whole section of vitamins, yeah. A through Z. And then it's good for something, you know, some part. They do it so that they could live longer, help, I mean, healthier. When someone's on their dying bed, vitamin C is not going to help them. You know, vitamin B, D, A, no. Only Jesus Christ Amen. can help him. Amen. And because why? Because he's resurrected. Yes. Even though you may face death within a few hours physically, but you're going to be alive again. Amen. And you're going to live forever yes. in heaven Amen. because of that blessed hope. Amen. Because if you believe in that risen Savior, not the so-called dead saviors everywhere out there, right. risen Savior, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
you live forever. Yes. I think that is uh, one of the best deals out there sure someone is. could ever get. And it's free. Amen. I mean, it's free. Thank you, Lord. That's why we can confidently say, even if anybody comes to us and tell us to deny Christ, deny Christ or you die or your family die, your children die. Many of the forefathers of faith, people in the you know, Fox's Book of Martyrs and our believers in you know, communist countries everywhere, they still had that boldness and courage and confidence and peace to say, I serve a risen Savior. Amen. Simple as that. I'm going to die anyways. You know, maybe I die painfully. Or I, you know, Lord willing, I die peacefully. But I'm going to be alive again. Amen. Pain is short. You get elbowed by brother over there, that pain's not going to last forever. Right? And you'll be resurrected. You have a perfect body. Right? I was trying to, you know, tackle Matthew like yesterday. He's too big. <laughs> you know, my ankle isn't feeling good because of that. And I'm pretty sure you know, older gentlemen are feeling a little bit, you know, a tiny bit, sore, right? Yeah, just a little, right? Can you imagine when we receive that resurrected body? It's perfect. Perfect. I don't have to worry about, you know, backache, side ache, you know, sprained ankle, uh, hard to move out of the bed, you know, once you lie down, that kind of state is gone Amen. forever. Yes. Perfect body. See, resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us that hope, blessed hope. Yes. What are you doing with it as a Christian? You have, you know, why do you think as a human being, people look at other people, especially when they're going down the dark path because they have hope. Because they see that I can receive some hope from that person, that group of people. I mean, do you, are you that hope to the lost world out there? When people see you, do they see that light? I mean, you are the light of the world. Do they think that, oh man, he she has something that I don't have. Do people ever feel that way about your life? After Christ resurrected, I'm telling you, those disciples turned the world upside down, 180 degrees. They're out there everywhere. They didn't care. You know, they were torn to pieces. They didn't care. They were crucified. They didn't care. They face the most excruciating torture because they saw the risen Savior. Amen. Right? When, the, when people say, you know, you got to be scared of that people. But when you have risen Savior inside of your heart, what can man do unto me? What can man do unto a risen Savior? And if risen Savior lives inside of you, there's no reason for you to back down. There's no reason for you to be scared. There's no reason for you to be afraid of the world. There's no reason for you to be not preaching the gospel. There's no reason for you to not give hope to those lost world out there. And you know at least one person in your life because everybody goes to school, work, you have acquaintance, you have cousins, you know, you have friends who need that light, yes. who need that hope. And it's you who can provide it. And you have that special, special weapon, which is the Word of God. Even before that, just the history itself tells the world that Christ resurrected. When people try to argue and people say, you know what, I don't need him, I don't need him, it's always ultimately their own decision to burn in hell. 
right? right? However, if you did trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is your duty. Because everybody's called to be a witness for Jesus Christ yeah. Yeah. to tell them. That's why resurrection of Christ is the most important biblical doctrine. And if you haven't thought about it too deeply, if you haven't appreciated it like you should, then you should turn from your ways and then start thinking about it. Man, when hymn writer wrote that I serve a risen Savior is in the world today, I know that he is with me, whatever mine may say. And he goes, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Do you think he was writing, you know, pouting, you know, like hating the world and life, and he just want to commit suicide when he was writing that? No, because he had that hope. When you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, point three, last point, it is reflected in your life. It's reflected in your life. Many times, when people think about lost ones, everybody, as you grow older, you'll face death of some folks. You know, your families, you know, maybe your close friends. And the saddest part is that you can't see them again, you know, in a human sense, right? That's a lot of children regrets the most the day when their parents die because they feel like I could have been a better child to my parents, or vice versa. You know, God forbid, but if the children die before their parents, man, parents feel worse. Like, man, I could have done more for my child, right? <coughs> However, if you trust the risen Savior, you're going to see everybody again, Amen. especially those loved ones that you never want to see them burning in hell. Then your life will be reflected of resurrection of Christ. What does that mean? All your loved ones out there, you're going to do your best, more than your best, so that they'll be resurrected together with you. Because if you don't do your part, they won't see resurrection. What's going to happen? I mean, they'll be burning in hell for eternity. If you you do say, I trust that Christ as my Lord and Savior, He's risen, He's resurrected, then it's your duty to tell others. One day in heaven, we'll see many, many familiar and also surprises as well. It's because you pray for them. It's because you pass that track to them because you share gospel to them because you're out on the street preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which includes resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they got saved. They'll be coming out of nowhere and thanking you. That one night, Friday night, and I heard you say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. He got to me. I was in a dark place. I needed hope. And he provided that hope. You said you serve a risen Savior. I serve all the dead saviors in the world. They never gave me hope and peace. Since you told me about risen Savior, man, I just decided to trust him, and my life changed. And that's why I'm here in heaven. Other spectrum at the white throne judgment when souls are sent to hell for eternity in the lake of fire, they might look at you straight in the eye. You never told me about risen Savior. You knew it all along? No. Oh, man, shame on you. And that's, I'm saying it very nicely. I'm sure there's going to be cursing, gnashing of teeth. You know, they're going to they're gonna give you all their might cursing you that you never opened your mouth about Jesus Christ. I've seen people through documentary when they go crazy 
And it's not a pretty sight. It's, I mean, I think it's, it's to the point it, gets sh it's, it will shock you so much. And that's why, you know, God will wipe all your tears away. Because there's going to be, you know, flooding of tears at the judgment. Because you're going to see so many of your loved ones, your friends, family, everybody, sent straight down to hell because you didn't do your part. If you do that all your part, what can you do, right? You did your best. You did all the sowing, you know, but the result wasn't there. But at least you could, you, you wouldn't be, you know, sh shameful in the sight of the Lord. How many people will be like that? How many people will have no shame at the judgment seat of Christ? Nearly zero, right? Only, only, only very few will be even close to being close to well done, thou good and faithful servant. I mean, obviously, you, you want to solve all your you know, sin problems and confess your sins. Yeah. But when it comes to witnessing, if you know that Christ resurrected from the dead, you have that power. Only people who believe in Christ can have that power to witness. Only people who believe in risen Savior can have that boldness and courage. Only people who have risen Savior in their heart can go out there and never be afraid what man would do unto them what devil would do unto them because you have risen Savior inside of you. Amen. The worst that could ever happen to you is what? You die. Right? It too shall pass. Time will just pass by. And don't you think that risen Savior will give you comfort? Don't you think that risen Savior will give you that strength? Lord Jesus Christ. Well, when we think about and read about Fox's Book of Martyrs, man, those saints, they were tortured, unimaginable tortures out there. Right? I mean, those inquisitor, inquisition, inquisitors, you know, those torturers came out with such a hideous devices to torment and give people the most pain possible, right? I mean, just literally, I mean, the simple things, but, you know, take all the nails out first, you know, cut, cut fingers one by one, right? And cut limbs one by one, right? I mean, there's no anesthetic things anywhere, right? right. You suffer it live yes. as you're alive, you know, pluck your eyes out, you know, cut your ears off, you know, cut your nose off, Right. Everything. How were they able to just go through and, I mean, faith grew more and more right. with that persecution because they knew they were going to be resurrected. Amen. They serve a risen Savior. Yeah. And Lord gives them comfort. I know. If someone was not comforted during those times by their risen Savior, how can they sing hymns right. at the stake? The most painful way for a human being to die is like getting burned. Right. That's why they burn people at the stake. But those saints were singing hymns as their bodies were burning. Praising God. Amen. Because God will give them strength to go through it. Yes. And they knew that they're going to be alive again. They'll be resurrected with the Lord. As a Christian, you and I should be shamed. And you and I should be shameful that we, even though we serve a risen Savior, our life does not reflect it. Yeah. All we care about is our own ways, you know, our own faces, you know, our, you know, everything that just to do with us. And then we lose the sight. We lose the you know, vision. We lose the fact that there are people out there who need the risen Savior. I'm only worrying about, oh, man, my fingernails 
not long enough today, short enough today, it's not color, you know. Oh man, you know, what am I gonna eat today? It's not that it's not important. Oh man, you know, this and that. When do you ever think about people needing risen savior in their life? When was this ever a priority in your life? For some, probably it was never a priority because you never even knew or realized that, man, I do serve a risen savior. Oh, yeah, man, it just dawned on me that resurrection of Christ is the most important doctrine in the word of God because without it, there's no reason to be a Christian. But now you know. You and I have no more excuses. Before you know it or you're, you know, lacking stuff, we could always give excuses. I mean, you you make mistakes, right? But once you know, there are no excuses. Now you know the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If he wasn't risen, again, let's go out there and let's go to the beach, mountains. Let's just have fun, you know, as, as a group, right? But no. Since he is risen, we're here, we believe, we have fellowship, and we go out there and witness. And make sure that your life reflects it. Make sure that your conversation reflects the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Make sure that your family sees it. Make sure that your colleagues sees it. Make sure that everybody else sees it. Because that will be the hope that they need in their life. And you will be so glad, you know, one day when you're in heaven, man, you see that person who resurrected just like you. Instead of eternal separation where you're in heaven and they're in hell forever. Such an important doctrine, such an important topic such an important conviction the resurrection of Christ gives to you and me. What will you do with it? Let's pray.